This example illustrates four fundamental concepts. They are the while loop, subroutines, threads, and profiling. Let's begin. The overall function this system will execute is to transfer knowledge from a book, which consists of words, into a database, which will contain the knowledge of the book. As we saw from the last example, flowcharts have an entry point, in this case called main, and this example will have an exit point called return. The basic approach is to use the flowchart to describe the software algorithm, which will begin at the top and end when we get to the end of the book. We will use a while loop to define the overall function, which allows us to process words in the book over and over again until we reach the end of the book. The while loop has got two parts to it. The first is the ending condition, shown here with this orange decision such that if we reach the end of the book, then we will stop the while loop. But if we have more words in the book, we will enter the body of the while loop, in this case a multi-step sequence used to transfer the data from the book, the knowledge from the book, into the database. The circles with the one are connectors, such that this overall loop here will traverse over and over again each time we read one word from the book. The first step in the body of this while loop will be to read one word from the book. In this case, this is an input function shown as the trapezoid. Once we read the word from the book, our goal is to remember that information into the database. So we will read a word from the book and remember it. We have a problem in this example. And that is, sometimes when we read the word, we don't know what it is. So, in this example, we will use the decision such that after we read each word, we will know whether or not we understand it. If we don't know what it is, we're going to have to look it up in the dictionary. And this brings us to the second fundamental concept in this example, and that is a subroutine. Looking something up in the dictionary is such a useful tool that we will encapsulate it as a function, as a subfunction, as a procedure, in our case called a subroutine, such that we'll pass in the word w and we will look it up in the dictionary, which will return the meaning of the word. And now that we know the meaning, we will be able to store it into the database. Subroutines have two parts. The first is the invocation, which is shown here, is where we call it. We pass in the parameter, we call the subroutine, and then, and when the subroutine is done, it will return the answer. The second part of a subroutine is its definition. We have another entry point signifying the beginning of the subroutine. This entry point will accept the parameter, in our case the word w, look it up, perform the function as desired, and return the result. The inside of a subroutine is just like any other function, any other program. In this particular case, we're going to read the word in a dictionary and look up its meaning, returning the value. The third fundamental concept in this example is the idea of a thread. A thread is the execution or the action of a program. In this case, we begin up here in main, and the program will execute performing the action. And so when we begin, the program first comes to the decision, more words exist, so it will come down here and read a word. The action caused by this executing program is to take words from the book, read them in, in this one, in this case we understand word zero, so we will remember it into the database. We can signify the first traversal of the loop with this two-letter code, meaning we executed word zero by reading it letter A, and we executed word zero by storing it, remembering it in the database, C0. The next time through the loop, we will capture word one, 
we will read it in, we know the value of word one, and so we will remember it too as well. And we will take word two, we'll remember it. We'll take word three, we'll remember it. So again, three more times through the loop brings words one, two, and three into the database. We can signify the action of the first, second, and third time through the loops with the codes A1, meaning reading word one, remembering word one, read word two, remember word two, etc. The fourth time through the loop is different. Word four, we don't know what it is. So we pass word four in to the subroutine. Again, word four will be the parameter, which is passed to the lookup function. The lookup function will read it in the dictionary and remember or learn what that word means. And when I return, I would go back to where I called it from. I go back over here. And now I know the meaning of word four. This action is signified by the letters a4, b4, d4, c4, because we had to look up word 4, re read it in the dictionary, d4, before we could remember it, c4. And the last word we read will be word 9. The next time I go through the loop, I come and there are no more words in the book. This means I'm at the end of the book and the program will return. The letter codes signify two very important pieces of information. The letter tells us where in the program the software was executing, and the number tells us what data, what word was it processing. This sequence of where it is and what it is doing, this sequence of letters and numbers represents a profile, which is a dynamic execution telling us that words 4 and 7 were looked up, but the other words were not looked up. In summary, there were four concepts introduced in this example. They are the while loop, which has an end condition and a body, subroutines, which have an invocation, which is where it is called, and a definition of what it does, threads, which are the action caused by the executing program, and profiling, which is the dynamic time sequence, not only showing where the program is executing, but what it is doing. Thank you very much.